welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Well, has democracy failed? <laughs> Is this the end? I don't know. Did Is we, it all over did, now? Did we survive the biggest election of the our lifetime? The most important election of all time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, Dave Smith was talking and had a real point. And I'd been thinking along these same lines over the last, well, I guess really just with this election, but um, about that thing coming up over and over and over again, this is the most important election of all time. And I, I'm actually like really starting to feel that each election is the most important election of all time because of the concentration of power that has developed. Yeah, no, there's definitely something to the idea that that government has grown to a point where it's so big that if your side loses, it affects your life. And that makes every election the most important election ever, more important than the last, because like I say, the the government has grown to a point where it you know, you, which side are, which side's going to rule over the other, you know. Yeah. I'm glad I rinsed out my glass before I put the More. whiskey in it. <laughs> so what kind of whiskey you put in that glass? Uh, four roses. Ah, Small I batch. I didn't see what you had grabbed, so you grabbed the four roses. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Good, good stuff. Yeah, I'm I'm ready for you to finish off that Caribbean cask. Yeah, I'm still working on it. And there's there's quite a few there. more drinks there. Not a oh, lot, though. Are there? Okay. Well, only because I... I I mix small ones for the podcast because I got to drive home later. Yeah. If if I was like hanging out for a while, that's probably I'd kill it in the night. Yeah. Or pretty quick. Mm. But well, what's left of it? You kill it in the night. It'd probably yeah. be a bad idea to drink the whole bottle in a night. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've done plenty <laughs> of that too. Not, yeah. Not the Caribbean cast. Too old but. for that now. Um, <laughs> yeah. Basil Hayden is definitely one I have been known to kill a bottle of in a night. Yeah. It's pretty light though. It's, it's light. A, it's an 80 proof. It is. Um, watered down whiskey. You still know you did it the next day though. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> you probably didn't so much when you were like 24, but then you didn't recognize the value of decent whiskey anyway. And This is it, true. Yeah. Or at least I didn't. No, I'm I definitely st- I'm, I'm didn't. Still either. drinking Jack Daniels at 24. Yeah. Not to like just crap on Jack Daniels. I, I mean, I don't think it's, it's terrible. Just but not a fine whiskey. Yeah, I. Um, once I expanded beyond that, my life got better. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I actually heard. Um, I think it was on uh, the No Agenda show. They played a clip from some doctor talking about how to deal with election stress. Yeah. <laughs> Or no, 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 not, I'm sorry, not election stress, election anxiety, anxiety, because it's all all about anxiety now, right? Yeah. (laughs) And, uh, one of his things was, um, don't drink alcohol. It doesn't help. And I was like, I disagree. (laughs) (laughs) Right. (laughs) Yeah. I think I did hear that because his recommendation was to drink water. Yeah. Well, I drink that too. Well, I drink that too, but <laughs> but yeah, I, I was like, no, I think I like one of those things way more. One of those things is going to help me with my stress way more than the other. Yeah, well, to parody Homer Simpson, yeah. alcohol, the cause of and answer to all of life's problems. <laughs> yes. Oh, there's something to that. I think he says beer. Yeah. But, <laughs> but oh, well, there's also, you know, no, no. TV, no beer, make Homer go crazy. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Another great line. Um, so, uh, <laughs> so there was no red wave no, in this election. I, I didn't, you know, what honestly, what I expected is that everything kind of would be overturned. Yeah. Um, I, I've just figured people are unhappy with the way things are going right now and that they would blame whoever the incumbent was and just replace people all across the, the board. Yeah. Um, that's not really what happened either. Yeah. But, um, I, you know, I guess the good news is that it doesn't matter. Yeah. Like the most important things aren't going to change any anyway. Right. It boot. wouldn't have mattered no matter what. <laughs> right. Boot or left boot. Still right. a boot. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I I was talking with um with my mom the other night and saying that like the real illusion of this whole thing is the illusion of democracy yeah. at all because the the people that are really running things they ain't get elected 
No. It's the entrenched bureaucrats that have been there forever. Like the people that you actually select to be your representatives, they have very little impact on the functioning of the government at this point. Yeah. They're just figureheads. They're just like people to blame. And Trump's really kind of the Trump proved that I think more than any other president yeah. has because I mean, he didn't Because get, nothing that he wanted yeah, done got done. Wanted, Even the things that are completely under the control of the executive didn't get done. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. Um, now, but Biden was still doing like a victory lap, and um, oh, he's excited. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I do think that the Republicans will end up taking the House by a a per. A well, I guess it's by two. Seat. I mean, yeah. sorry, not the House, the Senate by. Um, I guess it would be two seats because it'd be fifty one forty nine. Yeah. Um, and they'll take the House, but not by as much as they expected. Oh no, yeah, because there was talk of them having a a sizable. I, I say sizable, like five, six. You know, before all of this started, mm-hmm. or before the election. And because the Democrats didn't do as badly as as the predictions, um, they won't reassess anything. Yeah. Or change anything. Um, they'll continue to send all your money to Ukraine. Yep. Um, they're, you know. Yeah, that's the real loser in all of this anyway, because that that's not going anywhere. I saw yesterday, I think they're sending another $400 million? Yeah, wasn't quite a right. billion um, over to Ukraine. Yeah. <laughs> like, just got got to prop up those weapons companies, man. But it, it's amazing all the same, because the Democrats have been in control of all of government except for the Supreme court. Yeah. Um, all of the federal government d- up until now for the last two years. Oh yeah. Yeah. And they, they haven't really done anything. I mean, like I would yeah. think that the Democrats out there are feeling the same way they felt after an Obama, the Obama's first term. Yeah. Um, I mean, they, they put him back in like overwhelmingly, but I think that there was like, I think there was an expectation that that they would have gained more. Yeah. Well, and th- there is something to that because, I mean, at least Obama ca- could say after his first term, Obamacare. Like mm-hmm. that, that was an accomplishment that they made while he had control of both chambers. Yeah. Um, and, and Biden doesn't have that. I was trying to think back as you were saying that if, if Trump had gotten anything that he wanted when he controlled both chambers. Uh, I'm not really, I mean, nothing that got real press. Um, you know, there was a lot of deregulation in, in business, which, um, which was kind of, uh, counteracted by the, the pandemic lockdowns. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, I mean like small businesses were growing, um, and so forth before the I mean, pandemic. And I do remember that. Yeah. But then the, the pandemic lockdowns put an end to all of, all of that he could claim on that. And then the other stuff that he could claim, he either didn't actually accomplish or wasn't a positive thing. Yeah. Like, you know, throwing away the JCPOA yeah. was something that he was proud of. Yeah. Um, you know, selling a bunch of weapons to Saudi Arabia was something that he was proud of so that they could continue killing you many civilians. But those aren't actually things that you can like <laughs> tout yeah. or should. <laughs> um, um, I mean, I think he did with the JCPOA still, but I don't know that that, I, I, I mean, don't know he, that that he really definitely touted the, him to the anybody. climate change stuff, the, um, oh, pulling the, out the Paris, Paris Accord. Accord. Yeah. He, he had touted that, yeah. um, but yeah, like he definitely didn't get like a signature piece of legislation, at least that I can think of. Yeah. I mean, he could say, well, we've made plans to leave Afghanistan. Well, but you haven't done it yet. But you didn't do it. Yeah. Um, and we left Syria just to have the uh, Pentagon come out and say, well, actually, we still have troops in Syria. <laughs> right. We just didn't tell him. Yeah, right. We oh, just my didn't goodness. tell him. Uh, that's not, yeah. that doesn't reflect well on your commander in chief. Yeah. Uh, so. He didn't, I don't know, he didn't have anything really to claim. Now, I, I'm happy that it isn't strongly in one party's favor or the other. Uh, this is our best chance for them to actually not do anything. Yeah, gridlock is, <laughs> I've been actually saying this all week, like gridlock wouldn't be so bad, like, yeah. especially as a libertarian. Yeah, like, that's, that's the really, best possible result. That's really what you want. Like, <laughs> Please last... just don't take anything more away from me. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Like, but um, the... Either way, I mean, regardless of whether there had been a red wave or a blue wave, um, the things that that are important to us are still lose. Yeah. I mean, you still don't actually have any real property rights 
Yeah. Uh, you still have to ask permission for anything and everything. Um, you still can't use your own property without government permission um, or paying the government to use it. Yeah. Or, um, you know, the, the, the rights that we would claim, the natural rights aren't really rights. We don't have rights. We have privileges. And even more of those are being taken away year after year. Yeah. Um, so it, it wouldn't, and it doesn't matter whether it's the Republicans or the Democrats in charge. Like we still don't have those things. And those are the things that are important to us. Um, the really disappointing part to me was in this state, and this is part of because of that that fear that's built up about the other side, the other side. But I thought that it might work in our favor for the Libertarian Party in, in Alabama. Because yeah. we needed 20% of the vote in, in an election for it to, to not have to um, fight for ballot access again in 2024 and everything below that level. Yeah. And we had... Um, Ruth Page Nelson running um, against a Republican only, a two-way race two with a Republican yeah. for lieutenant governor. So if she'd gotten 20% of the vote, then in the entire state of Alabama, Libertarians would have been on the ballot for 2024. We wouldn't have had to... Well, we wouldn't have to go through the hassle. And when I say hassle, that's an understatement. Oh, yeah. Collecting the signatures to get on the ballot. Right. And th this is a huge resource drain for a small party. Oh, absolutely. Um, it would have been nice to have that money to to put into campaigns themselves. Put into them actual saves. campaigns, yeah. yeah. Um, instead of just trying to to, to get, get on the ballot. Right. <laughs> uh, so, and there's another reason that your democracy isn't really a democracy, by the way. You only have two very limited choices at best. Yeah. And, and I think she ended up with like between 15 and 16%. And in fact, all of the libertarians that were running in two-way races that I looked at ended up with like between 15 and 16 percent, except yeah. for Laura that was over 16 percent. As far as I could tell, she, <laughs> she, she did, did the, the best. best of all yeah. libertarians <laughs> in the state. But um, I thought that there would be at least enough unhappy Democrats or Democrats that would just oppose a Republican at every turn. Yeah. That would vote for the libertarian that when there wasn't a Democrat in the race. Absolutely. Uh, that we would hit 20%. And I'm kind of amazed that we didn't. And it's really disappointing. Yeah. No, I, I definitely agree. I was, um, I, I wonder how much it is that Democrats just didn't even bother going to the polls. Well, I mean, they had other things to vote for. Yeah. I mean, did they just, if there wasn't a Democrat in the race, did they just skip voting for that it's very in possible. that election entirely? Uh, that's, that's pretty sad. I voted in every single, in every single thing on my ballot. I of did. course. Um, well, no, I, I take that back. I didn't. I, I didn't vote on some of the amendments because I didn't. Oh, I didn't vote on the two amendments that didn't apply to my yeah. county. <laughs> yeah. Well, even. Because we have this weird system in Alabama where um, even like county specific changes go into the state constitution so everybody gets to vote on what happens in one particular Washington county, county or, or whatever Shelby County is. or yeah. what have you. <laughs> uh, and since I don't live in that county, I don't feel like it's right for me to vote on what happens in that county. Yeah. I did. I skipped those two. Yeah. But uh, I'm now I did only vote for libertarians. Yeah. I voted for libertarians or, and the ones that the Republicans that were running completely unopposed, um, I wrote somebody in. So yeah, me too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. When when there was no libertarian in the race, I wrote in a libertarian. Absolutely. Yeah. Because why not? Yeah. Exactly. Um, and the only actually the only libertarian on the ballot in this state that I didn't know was the governor. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy Blake, I think. Yeah, I really got a kick out of that too. Going through, um, as because I knew there were, I knew we had a lot of libertarians on the ballot, and I knew that I knew a lot of them, but I didn't realize till I started going through reading them and checking the boxes. Like, wow, I remember meeting this guy at the convention. Wow, yeah. I remember this guy. Yeah, cool. He's running. I've actually personally spoken with every single one of these people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and I will say this too. Um, they were, they all were in races. I was like, oh, he would be good at that position. Yeah. Like I remember thinking that with quite a few of them. Like, oh man, like he, that's perfect for him. Like mm -hmm. if he won that, he could do that job. Yeah. You know. I, I got a kick out of it. I thought that was uh, the party did an extremely good job this cycle with that. I yeah, thought. Um, and it it makes us seem like not just uh, it makes us seem real. Yeah, right. To have so many libertarians running in so many races, yeah. to look down the ballot and see 
Um, there's Republicans in everything, and there's Democrats in most everything. And wow, there's as many Libertarians as there are Democrats running. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> um, it would have been nice if, if it had gone a little bit. Yeah, um, I guess we have to start back from scratch next time. Yeah. Which is very disappointing. Yeah, <laughs> so it absolutely is. Well, uh, like I said, it, it comes back around to that. I think a lot of it has to do with that fear that was instilled in everybody. Um because it's it's a really effective strategy to get people to to vote to for one of the major parties, yeah. Uh, because you're so af- you're not even voting for the party that you're voting for. You're just voting against the other party because you're so afraid of what will happen if those other guys win. And for the you know if the Republicans won, it would be the end of democracy. Yeah. Which I, I just <laughs> that like was the, the whole, theme. That whole theme of this election was I. Which is just absurd on its face. Like, how do you vote in democracy? Like, what in the world does (laughs) that even mean? I'm going to say, I went up and down that ballot looking for it. It wasn't there, man. (laughs) You didn't see it? (laughs) I didn't see it. I missed it, man. (laughs) Got to read those amendments close, I guess. Yeah, I mean, there was all kinds of crazy stuff that came out. You know, it was... if you voted for the Republicans, that, that truth was on the ballot. And if you voted for the Republicans, there would be no more truth. What? <laughs> what are you talking about? Um, and yeah, the idea that you would vote on whether to, on democracy is just right. <laughs> absurd on its face. Uh, now, democracy doesn't just mean only when your team wins. Yeah. Like that's not the, the, the whole point of voting is that there's a choice there. Um, but there's not enough of a choice. And, yeah. and that's kind of my point about this isn't a democracy because you don't, you have a very limited selection of, um, between the two parties. They don't even put up good candidates because it's easier to get you to vote for one or the other. I think that this is yeah. intentional, yeah. um, because it's easier to get you to vote for one or the other of them if the candidates are bad. Because yeah. it increases that fear of the other guy winning. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, if the Republicans win, it's the end of democracy in this country. And if the Democrats win, it's the end of the nation. <laughs> right. Um, I, it's just, yeah. it's just silly. And it, it, dis- it disappoints me that so many people fall for this. And yeah. you know what? If you want change, and I think that a lot of people do, if you want change... Stop voting for these jokers. Yeah. They have controlled the country for 150 years. Yeah, and look at where it's gotten us. <laughs> yeah, things have not improved. Yeah. <laughs> so, and especially over the last, you know, 20 or 30 years, like just think about during your lifetime. Yeah. These are the two parties that have run the country, one or the other of them, for this entire time. Are things getting better? Are you tired of the way this is going? Yeah. If you're tired of the way this is going, stop voting for these two parties. Yep. If you want change, vote for a change. And you're not getting change with either of them. No, not at all. I think specifically back to the last 20 years, like just how much this country has changed just in 20 years, you know. Yeah, and it's so hyper-partisan at this point that, like, John Fetterman that guy. was elected. Like, the the Democrats in Pennsylvania voted for a man with an obvious mental impairment yeah. to be a leader— <laughs> for them because they didn't want the Republican. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying anything positive about Dr. Oz either. I don't think that that's a, a good choice. I'm just saying the At that, least Oz was competent, though. Yeah, I mean, at least he's got his mental faculties. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, the other guy... Like, and you, the Democrats, you couldn't find anybody that had a whole brain working that to put in, up against... Dr. Well, Oz, like, what the hell is going on in that state? There's yeah. a lot of people that live in Pennsylvania. There's, and a lot of them are Democrat. You couldn't find a guy with a completely functioning brain <laughs> to run for to run pos- for that position that you thought would beat Dr. Oz. Yeah, know. no. I mean, and it seems it's, like you could have put up anybody that put D after their name because I don't understand why you would vote for this guy. Well, other read, than that, I read somewhere, and it was in Pennsylvania. One of these um, representatives had passed away. Like oh yeah, a I heard about that before too. the election, and <laughs> he still, got he elected. still won. Yeah, the guy won. Well, I just roll his old bones over here. I guess so, <laughs> so man. Like, <laughs> it's a roll call vote. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, oh well, I, I yeah, I'm I'm blown away by some of this, and and I hate to tell everybody like to burst everybody's bu- uh, bubble on this, but. Um, the U.S. hasn't been a democracy or a republic for a long time. No. You want to know what the U.S. is and has been for 
I mean, since at least the end of World War II and really more like before we entered World War I, we are, in fact, a fascist oligarchy. Yeah. This country is run by a group of political elites. I mean, the greatest thing that Trump, just as proof of this, the yeah. greatest thing that Trump did was defeat a Bush and a Clinton in the same election. Right. <laughs> That's the best thing that he did. Yeah. Um, but this country is run by a political elite class um, that they select the options, the yep. two options that you have in every race. Yep. Um, and uh, and it's it's been fascist. You know, fascist is just this like the public private partnership. Yeah. Uh, I mean, when the, the government has so many rules that it essentially dictates to businesses how they're going to run their business and can um, either make a business a, a success or a failure just through their own legislation, like that's fascism. Yeah. Like if you have no choice as a business but to do what the government asks of you or you'll just be ended. Yeah. It, it's fascist. It's the same thing. It's essentially the government running Your the business. market. Yeah. Yeah. And if you want this to change, it's not to build government up. I, the, the, <laughs> I, I'm always amazed by people that are just, that really believe that government is a whole bunch of public servants that are just there to help you. And there's like, it's easy to be corrupted because of business, but really, really they're they're there to help you and it's just you know the the temptation of all that money is too great yeah no well, i mean that's like people seek self improvement yeah you hear this a lot from people who who um, and i don't mean that in a positive way yeah. in that case i mean i don't mean like become a better person <laughs> yeah well you hear it a lot from people who who are big or are proponents of um term limits Mm -hmm. uh, like, oh, well, we, they're, they're just in there too long. We need to cycle different people in and out of there. I'm mm -hmm. like, no, it's the system itself. Like term limits wouldn't, I don't know. I've The more I, I, I re learn and like live, the less I think term limits would do much good at all. Yeah, I, I mean, think it, the best answer in that regard is um, forget about term limits. Yeah. Do immediate recall. Everybody for every position should have immediate recall. Yeah. So that way, if you make your campaign promises and you go up there and do the exact opposite thing, because you know, it's six years before you got another election. Yeah. And by the time you're getting elected again, everybody will have forgotten the stupid stuff that you did in the first two years. Oh yeah. Now immediate recall. Let us get rid of that guy right away. Hey, yep. he said he was going to do this. He's doing the opposite. I want him out. I want him out now. Yep. We'll replace him right now. Absolutely. No, I absolutely agree. I would take that over term limits. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, I don't think, I, I don't think the term limits fixes the problem, but I think, I mean, I don't know that that would necessarily fix it either, but it would help. Yeah. Like it, it certainly wouldn't hurt. Yeah. It would be better <laughs> than what we have right now. I Absolutely. mean, there are places that have recall there are. options, yeah. but I, it's not as widespread as it should be. No. Um, and it's actually much harder to do than it probably should be as well. Well, that's, that's exactly it. Um, something else going back to the Alabama with our candidates and stuff, mm. um, just so people out there kind of know it, whether you live in the state or you don't, like Alabama has some of the, if not the most um, difficult um, access to get on the ballot in the country. Yeah, ballot access ballot requirements. Ac yeah, it's um, it's it's ridiculous. Like the what you have to go through to get on the ballot, and and I'm not saying they should just let everybody who wants to be on the ballot get on there, but it should be reasonable. Like you need reasonable ways. Like I mean, I, I'm not. Even, I don't know. I think they may as well just let everybody who wants to be on the ballot be on the ballot. Uh, maybe I think you. I think you can end up with way too many candidates pretty quick. Or you can you can have a nominal charge. I mean, I, like I hate that too because that's just money going to the government. But it at least makes you have to be serious. Yeah. Well, that's. I mean, <laughs> you want serious candidates. Like that's kind of my point. Is <laughs> like you do want. So I get having some kind of hoop to jump through, yeah. but it should be small. Like it should like like a couple of hundred signatures maybe. You know. Um, 
There's people I, around me that think I should run for this job. Yeah, I, I could. I was able to get enough, but like the amount of signatures we have to collect is just absurd. Mm-hmm. Um, there, there's no cause for that. Yeah, and you have to end up getting so many more signatures than the actual requirement because they throw out they as many as they out. can. Exactly. Um, you know, address doesn't match the voter roll. Gone. Gone. Um, yeah. y- you put a middle initial on the uh, signature sheet, but it's not on the voter roll. Gone. You know, I yeah. uh, can't read it. Gone. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> signature doesn't match. Actually, I don't think they check signatures, but yeah. yeah. Anyway, like I say, that's, but yeah, Alabama is one of the worst in the country in that regard. Mm-hmm. So, and it's because the Republicans have controlled it for so long. Well, I mean, that's the problem everywhere. Yeah. Uh, the, the reason that, that ballot access requirements are even a thing is because once the, the two parties that control the system now, they wanted to limit their competition. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's the, no there's no incentive for them to open things up. Yeah, I don't think that there's a, a single district of any kind in the country that where Republicans or Democrats have to do anything to get on the ballot. Yeah. They set requirements that they already met, and so they never... Never have to go again. Never had to do it. Yep. And, you know, that's democracy for you, I guess. <laughs> All right. So anything else as far as elections? I don't know. Like I didn't, like I said, I've been following it. I'll be interested to see how things shake out, but. Well, um, like I don't, I don't really get into the demographics very much. Um, but I suspect that the, I suspect that the, a lot of the trends that have been going on continue through this election, which is that, um, the Democrats are getting a lot more, um, College educated whites, actually, college yeah. educated whites are flocking in droves to the Democrats, and part of that I think is the effectiveness of the idea of um, that it's the intellectuals that are Democrats, and it's just like appealing to people's pride yeah. uh, when they've done that, and you know the idea that the Republicans are a bunch of rubes that don't believe in science and don't believe in whatever yeah. I, biology, maybe <laughs> All right. you know. Whatever it happens to be, um, democracy. <laughs> I guess that's the thing right now. But, um, and I, I think that that probably continued. Now, more working class people are moving to the Republicans. Yeah. Uh, of all races. Yeah. Um, but I think that probably with Biden's at least promise t- to relieve student debt, that that probably pushed that trend to continue. Yeah. Um, both both of those trends both to those continue. Trends, yeah. Um, working class people don't really benefit from that and probably don't care and think of it as like their money that they're working hard for going to people that already have a a better station in life. Yeah. Um, whereas the the people that are benefiting from it are the college educated or college bound, um, and yeah. so it would push them again in that direction. Uh, I don't think that that's a winning long term strategy for them. Because <clears throat> there's just more working class people. Yeah, right. And but I don't know. That's that's the direction things are. Yeah, yeah, if you make college essentially free, I guess that's not really true anymore. Yeah. Um. So I don't know. We'll see how that. We'll see how that pans out. Yeah. The only other thing I was kind of thinking about on the way over here is so. There's been a lot of talk about the the republic like the extreme republicans the maga mm-hmm. republicans and they're just um they've got these extreme ideas and extreme beliefs and what it really got me thinking about was you know the libertarian party and kind of the transition we've made over the past year or so with the mises caucus and with cuz that's the big knock on the mises caucus is well they're extreme they've got these extreme ideas and these mm-hmm. extreme candidates and things of that nature and i just got to think i was like you know because I'm all for, I'm actually for the more extreme messaging and that type of thing. Yeah, and, I don't and even, even think candidates. Of it as, yeah, I don't even think of it as extreme as much as uncompromising. Yeah, and uh, like, so what is what is worth compromising your principles? I think very very little. Yeah, well, so. but what what I got to thinking about was, you know, you I, I thought back to some of the other 
politician. And I think back to Ron Paul specifically, because Ron Paul has never been one to steer away from the extreme or or even like you say, like the principled viewpoint. Mm-hmm. The difference was like when you put a camera in front of him, not only would he take that position, but he would nail it. Mm-hmm. Like he, by the time he was done talking, you were with him. You were like, well, He's right. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know that I entirely agree with that because I think that he's hard to understand a lot of times. Well, I, he, well, I, he's not the most eloquent. Eloquent. But he, he made... He, the, he stops sentences in the middle and moves on to the next sentence yeah. and things like well, that. Well, there, Sometimes there really is a learning curve with listening to him. Like, <laughs> you, I, 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 you're, there's something to that. Mm. Like, there's definitely... But Trump kind of speaks the same way. Like, yeah. just this weird vernacular he that he uses. Mm. Um, but... But I think that's as far as like with the with the Libertarian Party, like with when we're picking these candidates and we're deciding who we're going to put forth and stuff. I think it the idea that they're just going to take the most extreme position and just sit there mm-hmm. isn't necessarily a good thing. But if they can take that position and sell it, go for it. Like that's that's kind of where I'm at with it. I don't know. It's just something I was thinking about on the way here today that. Well, the thing I've been thinking about is just the, uh, and we've talked about it before, I think, but um, just with the Democrats' focus on, you know, this is a challenge to democracy, yeah. and I, I don't understand why somewhere along the way democracy became a moral good in and of itself. Yeah, it, it democracy is a neutral what system? I well, guess it, you'd say. It's it, democracy itself is not a moral good. I mean, moral, uh, you know, like rule by majority is not a moral good. It depends on where it leads you. Well, and that's that's the reason we don't have that. Like the founders mm-hmm. understood that that mm-hmm. democracy, pure democracy, was not a good route to go, and that's the reason we went constitutional republic. Yeah. Um. It it gets enough. It. There's enough check supposedly. Now I don't believe any of this anymore, but mm-hmm. the idea is is that there's enough checks and balances and 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 enough feedback from the public, but also to to balance everything out. Mm-hmm. But I mean, we've, well, we've yeah. watched it collapse. <laughs> like it, it, the idea of checks and balances, and that each branch would um, jealously guard its authority, um, and that that would uh, it's collapsed. Would prevent yeah others from taking it. it what this has become is just a um, a case in how uh, cooperation is more effective than competition. Yeah, the, they've all gained by working together and yeah. and not preventing others from stepping into their space. Yeah, and so they've been able to accumulate more and more authority for all branches instead of um, them defending their areas of authority and and keeping the other branches in check from growing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. I mean, all you know, tools. Tools can be used in many ways. Yeah. It's you know, it's not it's not the tool itself. It's what you do with it. Like, okay, so I have this pen here. Yeah. Um, I could write the most beautiful and moving love letter with this pen. Yeah. Or you could stab somebody. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, or I could. There yeah. you go. <laughs> I mean, it could go either go way, the, right? Go the other way with it. You could stab a bitch in the neck instead. Yeah, there you go. You know, so that's, you know, it's nothing but a tool. Yeah. Um, and democracy is the same way. It's not a good in and of itself. I mean, yeah. there was a time in this country where the majority believed in slavery. Yeah. It doesn't make it moral. Yeah. It was still wrong. Absolutely. Uh so I, and even the people that proclaim that they believe in democracy and democracy and democracy, they don't really believe in democracy. Yeah, it's only when it works in their favor. They only want their team to win. No, it's it's an excuse for the. It, it's a justification of the power, not yeah. You know, it, it's nothing more than that. It's just a tool. To, it, it's a tool that's used by government at this point to keep the rest of us in line. Yeah. Um, to keep you all subjugated because hey. You are the government. The people chose this. Yeah, exactly. You, the people, chose this. This is your decision. Yeah. You're in chains because you made this choice. Right. <laughs> and so you have no no leg to stand on to, to uh, Dispute rebel. It. Yeah. 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 
so that everybody feel better about their country now. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh. Um, yeah. In, end of this is that nothing really changes. Yeah. yeah. And we'll just continue on the way we were and it, it wouldn't have mattered. Um, yeah, I think Hulk Hogan, I don't have the quote, but he said something this week along the lines of the faces change, but nothing else. Yeah. Brother. <laughs> brother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> something like that. Brother. I'm sure I'm misquoting uh, it. There was definitely brother at the end. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there was. <laughs> but yeah, the faces change and that's it. And, yeah. You know. So. Yeah. Keeps on marching along. Yep. Uh, we know that over the next two years, we'll continue to lose privileges. Our, yep. our rights will continue to be privileges. We'll continue to lose those. Yep. That our property won't really be ours. Yeah. And, um, and nothing really will. It can only get worse. <laughs> it only gets worse from here. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, back to that issue, like if you're concerned about money in politics, like, this is what I've always said about money in politics. If you make it so that it doesn't pay... Like if yeah. the politicians don't get to choose the winners in the market, then you won't have a problem of money in politics. The reason there's money in politics is because there's a return on investment. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Just ask Lockheed. Just, yeah. T I mean, take away the, the incentive, you know, take yeah. away the, yeah, the power. The power is what, what gives it to them. Hell, uh, Ukraine just, um, on our taxpayers dime, yeah. um, sent a delegation over here to meet with congressmen. Presumably yeah. to lobby them to give us more or give them more of our money. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I saw something yesterday. I think four hundred million we're sending over. Yeah. You know, I guess that's this month's bud Ukraine budget. Yeah. <laughs> uh, not like that could be used for anything better here, right? Mm -hmm. But the you. I mean, I I heard leading up to the um, election that well, the I mean, the Democrats were pushing uh, their issues were. Um, abortion and racism, of course, and um, well, I guess that mostly covers it, doesn't it? That's pretty I, well like, it. Democracy, yeah, of course. And then the Republicans' issues were um, inflation and crime. Yeah, like if you really want to boil it down to those two, which one would you choose? <laughs> well, I mean, more people than I would have expected chose uh, abortion and democracy. Yeah. I guess so. <laughs> but there, I mean, there were some things that, you know, make you rethink some of that too. Maybe it's just blending more across the country because the uh, New York governor's race, the separation was like six points. It yeah. was like 53-47 or something for Kathy Hochul, which I don't know why anybody would elect that woman again. <laughs> but, I mean, the, the governorship yeah. in New York has been... Democrat by like 20 points for 30 years or something like that. Well, it's been for a while. I mean, Giuliani would be the last Republican, right? Uh, that was in no. 2000. Um, Ish. I think there was somebody since him. Ed he, was there. He wasn't governor, though. He was New York City mayor, right? Oh, he was New York City mayor. Yeah, you're right. My bad. Yeah, um, yeah I'm all I don't remember who the last... Republican, Republican governor, governor in New York. I don't really keep track of New York politics that much. I <laughs> right. just I just found it interesting beforehand that they sent Obama up there to stump for Kathy Hochul. And I thought, wow, they're sending their all-star to New York. That seems like, like it, it seems odd to me that they would be concerned enough about New York right. to send Obama. And, yeah, and he is the all-star. Like, they don't have two, their deck ain't that big as far as people <laughs> yeah. that they can pull. Yeah. Because... Yeah, I mean, I mean, politicians are so unlikable. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're gonna send Hillary Clinton? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why um, don't you just stay home? Send this one out, <laughs> yeah, Hillary. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can roll out. Um, what's his name? Hillary, <laughs> you've done enough. Her husband could draw some crowds That's and true. pull some people. Like That's he's true. still got. He's the, got charisma. He's still got the juice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But but there ain't many more though. <laughs> That's true. Um, so the fact that it was only a six point race that that. Like, that's a really close New that York governor something. race. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. I think that, I mean, I think it speaks volumes about what we were talking about the last podcast, that people don't like being locked in their homes. Yeah, yeah. And that was one of the worst states as far as that goes. Absolutely. So. They're still doing that stuff from time to time. <laughs> All right. Um, but I, I think that, you know, the same kind of thing happened in Michigan. Gretchen Whitmer was one of the worst about that, too. She got reelected. Yeah, yeah. So... 
maybe people like being locked in their homes. I don't know. Yeah, I think a lot of people have just forgotten, at least in a lot of areas. Like I listen to our podcast, <laughs> right? <laughs> Be reminded. Oh, uh, I haven't forgotten. I think that it's just become so hyper partisan that it doesn't matter. Yeah, I, I think that. I mean, I I don't know how this country has become so tribal, and this is one of those things. This is why I talk about secession as a as a real answer. Yeah. Because, because it at, is a real answer. Because at some point, you can't, it, like, if you can't come to an agreement, like, there's no way, no way I would ever, I sure as hell didn't vote for Kay Ivey. She wasn't even that no. bad about it. Yeah. Um, but I would have never voted for Kay Ivey after she did lockdowns and mask mandates in the state. Yeah. Even though she backed off of it pretty early. Yeah. To hell no. with her. No, done with that. Yeah. And I, I just can't imagine voting for somebody that, that put you under house arrest, yeah. especially in retrospect. But like I said, it, uh, you know, before it was a, it's a moral question that they were on the wrong side of from the beginning, no matter what the results had been. Yeah. But all the same, especially now looking back, yeah. how can you, I, I don't know how you can even justify it. You can just, and again, like I said on the last, I guess it was the last podcast might've been the one before, um, whenever it was, that I said it, that these decisions were made out of fear or um, a desire for power. And either way, that's not the person that you want that in a leadership role. Yeah, that don't make for good leaders. <laughs> yeah. You don't want people that make decisions on fear or on power. Absolutely. And uh, and this is the this is another one of the the crucial problems with democracy is that the people that seek these positions are generally not the people that you would want to have them. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, I'm sure that there are some a few good politicians out there, maybe but there's only, somewhere. There's only a handful, though. <laughs> yeah, and at some level, I don't think that there are anymore. I mean, yeah. I, I think that there's a, you know, you can probably find them in local politics. Yeah. Um, when you get to the state and federal levels, I don't know that they exist. Yeah. Even the ones that I like at the federal level, I'm not sure that Yeah. they're really good people. Um, you know, a friend of mine was asking me about, um, you know, think of a politician that I like, like a Thomas Massey. Yeah. Massey would be top of the list. Yeah. Um, and say, do, so do I think that if he had, a uh, uh, if he was the president yeah, that I, that he wouldn't be corrupted, that I would be happy that he was president. Um, I, I said, well, I don't know that I would trust him not to be corrupted. I don't yeah. think that I would trust him not to be corrupted. No. I think that that's just is it, corruptible people seek these kinds of positions, I think. Yeah. And I think a lot of him. I, I actually think very highly of him. Yeah. But um, would I trust him with all the authority that is vested in the president now? No, I wouldn't trust anybody with which all is, that authority. Which is exactly the problem is there's too much power in that position. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's where the fix is at, is yeah. to start pulling the power away. Yeah, you have to decentralize, radically decentralize. Um, power needs to be more and more local. It needs to be top... It, it, does, it needs to be bottom, bottom up, up yeah. not top down. Yep. And uh, And that's the problem that we really have here. And it will continue to get worse. I mean, it, it just tends to flow it, that yeah, direction. It just feeds on itself um, but until, until it collapses, which not that I'm specifically rooting for that, but, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, something's got to give at some point. Yeah. Um, but we have seen both on the left and the right uh, states standing up to the federal government over the last decade, roughly. Well, and even um, just different... The left and using the left and right just kind of generally mm -hmm. like big people on either sides of that talk more and more about like just the the national divorce just like yeah I don't like that term very much I'd rather use secession than national divorce yeah but uh, the point remains the same there's there's a point both at which both sides have gotten open to it though yeah um, there's a point at which you have to make the decision like we're worse together than apart yeah. And like, we're a bankrupt country anyway. <laughs> you mean morally or economically? Both. <laughs> but I meant economically. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Um, well, what happens then? Who's responsible for that debt? It just goes away. <laughs> I love that that's how that works. 
Well, I mean, what else are you going to do? That co- United States doesn't exist anymore. That country's gone. Mm-hmm. What do you do? Like, <laughs> Sorry, China. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh, that that could have bad implications. I it guess. would. Yeah. Uh, it, I mean, it it would no matter what. Yeah. It, it doesn't matter how the um how the, the debt U.S. Gets economy fails. Defaulted. Yeah. yeah. It's it's a default, nevertheless, and yeah. And both sides have a lot of weapons. Military. We'll just have to sell off our nukes. Hey, there you go. <laughs> On the on the black market. Yeah. Well, maybe we could dismantle them and sell off the uh, the fuel for reactors. Oh, there you go. It'd be it'd be the swords to plowshares kind of idea. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like it. Um, well, you ready to wrap it up or? Yeah, I don't think I got else you want to. No, I don't think I've about. got anything else. Like I say, the the end to another biggest election of our lifetime. Yeah, I look, I look forward to the next one. Yeah. Well, campaigning will start soon enough. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, like I, probably next week. I, I was going to say, <laughs> uh, word on the street is is that Trump's going to announce the 15th. Well, I think so. it's obvious that he's running. Oh, he's going to run, yeah. Um, he's already attacking DeSantis, so yeah. there's no way he's missing out. He's he's made it very clear, I think, yeah. just And that's going to be an interesting storyline to follow to see how that plays out between them two. Um, I think Trump's got a lot of baggage that he doesn't realize that – he can't that he he can't just walk away from with yeah. the vaccine and stuff. Maybe, maybe we'll see. Uh, I I don't think. Well, you know what's funny about it is between the two of them, I think that I would rather have Trump as president than DeSantis. You think um, so? Yeah, because it, Trump, at least, is better on foreign policy. Yeah. Not good. Not good. Yeah. But better. DeSantis yeah. is a believer in the military state. He um, he believes in the empire. So he's a hawk, right? I mean, yeah. I don't know I mean, a whole lot seems to be. about his foreign policy, but he seems like a hawk. Yeah, I'm, I believe it seems to me that he believes in the the military state, the police state, the surveillance state, and the yeah. the U.S. empire. Yeah, and uh, and I don't want that person. This is another one of those problems by those limited choices that you get. Yeah. Um, each time there is no anti-war party. No, doesn't really exist. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, um, you got Tulsi Gabbard and like who well, else? And she's not in any party anymore. No, yeah. So yeah. still not anti-war party. Yeah. Um, there's a few Republicans like you have the Rand Pauls and Thomas yeah. Massey's that are opposed to the war. Um, I'm not sure that you have anybody in office right now that's opposed to the war in the Democrat Party. I can't think of them. Well, um, yeah, now that Tulsi's gone, like Tulsi would be the only one I could that at least jumps out out in yeah, my brain. Yeah, uh, no, I mean, there's plenty of Democrats that are opposed to the to the war, but I don't know that there's any in office because, yeah. uh, for well, example, that's what, yeah. I got a text from um, a friend and because I, I sent him the um, a article from Anti War about that the Pentagon expected, con- well, here's something to talk about actually real quick, yeah. um, that the Pentagon expected Congress to pass um, legislation giving them um, essentially uh, war footing um, purchasing power. Oh, yeah. Um, right now. Yeah. So that they could just like purchase like mad for Ukraine or, you know, to help help Ukraine fight Russia. Um, as if we were involved in the war, and obviously we are, but I mean, yeah, you know, just that, that as if we were directly involved, right? Yeah, like as if this was, you know, during World War II, yeah. And they're like, Pentagon, just buy what you need to buy just to get it, it done, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's the essentially gives them a blank check, um, to buy stuff, yeah. And uh, he said, well, you know, that seems typical, like, and who's going to stand up against this? against the war machine, against the military industrial complex. Who's going to stand up against this AOC. And I was like, man, AOC has already proven that she won't No, she is. Bernie she Sanders is, is, uh, is, you know, he's totally flipped. He's completely, I mean, he's voted for every single one of these Ukraine, um, payments. So has AOC, the whole squad, Ilhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, all these people that, that the left thought were going to go in there and be different yeah. and be anti-war and be good. Like, Good liberals, good left yeah. progressive liberals. Nope. They won't Not. stand up to the war party. Nope. Too much money. Yep. There's just very few people that will stand up. And, you know, Bernie particularly, I remember in 2016 saying, like, I think this guy 
is a true believer. I like, I don't agree with him. Yeah. But I think that this guy is a true believer and, yeah. um, he has proven me so wrong on that. Yeah. I mean, if he's a true believer, then he is the weakest man ever. Yeah. Like no spine. <laughs> well, um, that could be the case. Too. I mean, that could be the case, Yeah. but I, I saw, um, where, uh, no, I think it was on the Jimmy Dore show. Um, yeah. they had a guy that used to work on the Sanders campaign, like high up in the Sanders campaign, like new, yeah. like interacted with Bernie Sanders himself yeah. personally, regularly. Yeah. And, uh, he had gone to a Bernie rally recently and was challenging him on the war stuff Yeah, that he was, you know, marching us into nuclear war with Russia. And they, why is he supporting all of these, um, uh, subsidies to the Ukrainian military and so on and so on. Yeah. And um, Bernie uh, stopped on the way out, and this is a guy he knows. Yeah, yeah. Right, this like is, he knows him personally. <laughs> yeah. And said, who's paying you to do this? <laughs> he said, nobody's paying me to do this. Who's paying you to do this? No one. Yeah. Do I have to have somebody to pay me to be against nuclear war? Right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, but the, the that was Bernie's position that, oh, if you're against this, you must be being paid by... RT or whatever. I don't know yeah. who he thought Whoever, might, yeah. might be, yeah. but uh, unreal. Yeah. Like, and so any, any illusions that may have remained that Bernie was a true believer in like a real socialist progressive. Yeah. Gone. Yeah. Gone. Just a book salesman. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was another one of those changes, right? When, uh, um, he made all that money and he went, it went from being the millionaires and the billionaires to just the billionaires, <laughs> just the billionaires. and the, the top 1% to somebody must've whispered in his ear, like, that's you, you're in the top 1%. And he's like the top one tenth of 1%. <laughs> uh, all right. Oh God. Uh, <laughs> oh man. So, oh, well, that's where we are. I mean, the, you yeah. know, on the war footing, uh, Russia's pulled out of Kherson or at least pulled back across the river. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was a good tactical move cause while sitting there, they probably could have withstood an attack or two from the Ukrainians. Um, supply lines are threatened across the river. Yeah. And it would just take a couple of... Strategically placed bombs. Yeah. Break down some dams on the river, and then suddenly you can't get supplies across, and you can't re remove the troops that are there. So... Yeah. But, uh, you know, there's, like, there's an end to this, and I, I don't think it ends with the Ukrainian win. And you were mentioning before we got started, the, the U.S. has started talking about, well, we need to have some discussions about how to end this thing. Yeah. Um, and that's a good thing. But it does seem like... The demands are too high. Yeah, they're trying to push this like it would be a... Um, a, a what do you call the surrender with... No. Uh, unconditional. Yeah, it'd be like an unconditional surrender to Russia, which they're obviously not going to do. No. Uh, and this is one of the ways that the U.S. tries to play that they're the, you know, that they're the, um, that they're cooperating, that they're the, the uh, have the moral high ground that, well, we're trying to, you know, we're trying to make agreements with Russia to ha how to end this thing, and they just won't deal. Yeah. Well, because you gave them a deal that they cannot possibly accept. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, it would be like if Russia went in and said, okay, well, you know, we'll end the war in Ukraine, um, but we're going to get all of Ukraine and um, and half of Poland and New York City. Yeah. That sound good to you? Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, no, we can't possibly make this agreement. And there's no way Russia has ever given back Crimea. No. And it's dangerous for Russia to give back the territories that they've grabbed at this point. No. Um, because... Ukraine, I know a lot of people don't want to hear this, but yeah. Ukraine has proven that they will go in and kill everybody that they think was working with the Russians. Yeah. yeah. Every single civilian that they think had any kind of connection to the Russians, which is most of the population in those areas at this point. Yeah. So they yeah. can't do it. Yeah. Um, I mean, Russia has some kind of obligation to protect those people at this point. Yeah. Doesn't, doesn't sound good. No, I don't think this is ending anytime soon. I mean, I, no. I still think that it's unlikely that this thing will go nuclear. Um, but the, you know, the chances are higher than they were before the war. Yeah. Um, chances are certainly higher than they would have been if they had negotiated in April and come to an agreement. Yeah. Which they were ready to do. Yeah. Um, and Ukraine 
wouldn't have lost what they've lost at this point. And as long as this keeps going, every time, like those of you that are, it's just like when we were talking about our, our own wars and said, you're really worried about the veterans. You're worried about our soldiers out there. Then bring them home. Absolutely. Because as long as this goes on, we keep losing soldiers. And as long as this goes on, Ukrainian civilians keep dying. And so yeah. do Russians. Yep, on both sides. Seems so, to be more on one than the other, but still, though, like... Yeah. So you really want... If you're worried about the people of Ukraine, then root for an end to this thing. Yeah. You know, the the... <laughs> Like in Afghanistan, when they're talking about the women, okay, well now the Taliban's taken over and the women can't go to school anymore. Hey, you know what? When they were being bombed regularly, I'm pretty sure they weren't going to school anyway. Right. <laughs> or they weren't learning much if they were there. <laughs> yeah. Spent all their time huddled under the desk. Under a desk, yeah. Yeah, war doesn't serve anybody's purpose. It's like the last, you know, the last answer. It's like, this is how you got to be what you got to do now to be taken seriously. That certainly seems to be what Putin ended up doing. Like, Hey, yeah. I keep telling you and I keep telling you and you keep ignoring me. Yeah. And so what do I have to do for you to listen? I guess this is it. This was it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they're listening now. I mean, it's not yeah. doing any good still, No. <laughs> but can't be a doormat either. Yeah. No, absolutely. All right. Well, this uh, podcast that we thought was going to be about 25 minutes is about an hour now. Yeah, right. Yeah. And it's, well, I swear we didn't talk, start with a lot to talk about. I know, I know. I've got three. Well, not even. I've got like two and a quarter lines of notes here. Yeah. Turns and it just says, ours will end democracy. D's will end nation. U.S. has been fascist oligarchy since at least the end of World War II and probably since entry into World War I. And then... Of mental impairment, because I had to bring up Fetterman. Yeah. Because it just blows my mind. <laughs> that one blows my mind, too. I can't believe that happened. I mean, I don't know that it's a lot. I, I kept thinking of a, um, there's a very, very few of you out there that will appreciate this. Um, but I kept thinking of uh, Albert Rosenfeld from Twin Peaks when he um, finally tells off the sheriff and says, well... I've had about enough of morons and halfwits, dolts, dunces, dullards, and dumbbells. And you, you chowderhead yokel, you blithering hayseed, you've had enough of me. And then the sheriff proves that he has by punching him in the mouth. But <laughs> um, that, like, there's so much of that line that I like. And but what I've been thinking when I've been watching this, some of this election stuff is dolts, dunces, dullards, and dumbbells. Yeah. Like between the Fettermans and the Herschel Walkers and the like, yeah, man, we, we have got to find a better quality of people to select <laughs> as leaders in this country. There's uh, got to be a better <laughs> quality of people to select as leaders in this country. Oh, and, uh, you this know, makes me think back to idiocracy, man. Yeah. That, that movie that, that is fastly what, becoming a documentary. Yeah. Like <laughs> the, the, um, the fact that this is the kind of offerings that are put up should make everybody disillusioned with democracy. Right? Yeah. But it like, doesn't seem to. Not yet. Because democracy is a moral good in and of itself. Yeah. Like a pen. Like a pen. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, um, we, let's see, next week. No, we're good for next week, right? It's Should the week be. after. I think so. It's Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Next week's good. Yeah. Um, My brother comes in town on Friday, though, so we... We have to record on Thursday, I guess, next week. Sounds good. All right. Well, um, so we'll be back then. In the meantime, you can follow us on uh, Facebook. You can subscribe on iTunes, Podbean, and or YouTube. Uh, like and share, comment, subscribe, tell your friends, write criticisms or reviews or, I don't know. Say good stuff. Yeah. Do, do things. Yeah. Interact. It, all of it helps. We really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, we'll be back next week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later. Later.